From 2015 to 2020, I spent 10 hours a week creating product photography for a local shoe store here in Atlanta. I started as a complete rookie and had no idea what I was doing and learned along the way. This product photography experience made me an all-around better photographer, and today I'm sharing why everyone should give product photography a try and what I learned in those five years. YouTube, what is good? Now, first and foremost, got to apologize for the lack of videos lately. Your boy has been getting the final piece of the 1826 Faded Collection Part 2 ready. It's up on the website right now. It's a hoodie1826.com. Y'all are getting the exclusive first announcement of it. So if you're watching this video, you can head over there, get first dibs before I announce it on Instagram. So if you're finding this video for the first time, like I said in the intro, I did product photography as one of my main photography jobs for about five years. The thing with product photography is that it's for everyone. A lot of people think I have no interest in product photography. Why would I do this? It's for everyone because the lessons you learn in product photography translate to every other type of photography. You see, product photography gives you the control. It takes everything and condenses it into a smaller form. So if you're out in the mountains hiking and you're trying to create landscapes, you have very little control over that scenario. But let's say you're making photos of some sneakers in your house, you have all the control over all the elements to making a good photo. So essentially, you can learn photography while having a lot more control for when you get out into the less controlled scenarios. Hopefully that makes sense. And if it did, hit that thumbs up button for me. It helps out the video and I'm answering comments on this video for the first two hours it's alive. But this idea of just shrinking everything down into a more controlled environment is why I encourage most people to dabble in product photography, even if it's not something they wanna do like as a career or anything like that. It's just a fun way to practice and get better and make some fire Instagram or Twitter photos or something like that. So let's get into everything I know about product photography that you're gonna to wanna to apply to anything you do. The first thing is filling up your frame and focusing on composition. Now composition is one of the hardest pieces of photography because for a lot of people it comes naturally and a lot of people it doesn't. And if you're somebody who that doesn't come naturally for, product photography is a way to practice that and make it a little bit easier for you. You can make mistakes and say, what's wrong with this photo? Do I need to turn this item a little bit? Do I need to move this around? And what's cool is these lessons of composition can be taken out into the field and applied to any other type of photography like I mentioned before. So maybe you're out making landscapes and you think, okay, the composition here, there's too much negative space at the top, so maybe I need to find something to put in the foreground of this image. These are lessons that are very easily learned in product photography. So number one is layout is everything. Fill up your frame, focus on composition. The second thing is that details are everything. Details matter so much in product photography because everything is once again condensed down. So my background in product photography was in shoes, and some examples of details that you need to pay attention to are things like the tongue of the shoe being up. A lot of people might overlook look the fact that the tongue of the shoe creates the silhouette of that particular shoe. So if it's down and tucked into the shoe while you're making the photo, it's gonna look weird and not present it in as good of a light as it normally would. Same thing goes for things like shoelaces. Let's say the laces are twisted up or they look kind of weird. If you miss that detail, it is gonna present the product in a less than ideal way, and hence the consumer might not like it as much as you want. And this is once again an element of photography that might not come naturally to you. For me, it comes a lot less naturally and every time I'm doing product photography I have to sit and stare at it for a second and think okay are you missing anything like is there something off here is there something you're not noticing so the next thing we got to talk about is color and texture can add a lot to a boring product shout out to my dog sorry he's moving in the background but if you're making photos of 10 shoes a week you're bound to get one or two pairs that are just they're just boring. And if you photograph them in a boring way, it's just gonna enhance how boring that particular product is. So what I like to do is incorporate colors, incorporate textures into the background of these photos just to add something more to the image. And also if you have a product that is interesting that you really like, you can think in terms of monochromatic colors and say, okay, what could I do that maybe highlights certain details in here that I really like? Or what can I do that might create a monochromatic look to highlight the other details in an inverse way? Now another thing to keep 
keep in mind is more light the better. Light is everything, and if you don't own a light, window light is your best friend. Figuring out a way to get your product as close to the window as possible is always gonna be best. The other day, I got this new photo book in the mail called The White Sky by Mimi Plum, and I went to make a photo of it over there by that window where my Christmas tree now is. But in that scenario, I put the book down on the floor, which means the window light wasn't hitting the book directly. So I moved it over to my day bed over there. I used the blanket as a backdrop to add a little bit of texture in, and we had plenty of light coming into the window to create some good, nicely lit product photos. Now, obviously with product photography, details and clarity are gonna matter. You want a nice, clean image, and more light is gonna give you that because you can keep your ISO low, and also all your details are gonna be illuminated. Window light is a good cheat, but it's honestly not as good as having some studio lights. So if this is something you wanna take seriously, you can consider investing in something like that if you so desire. Now, my next two notes are some very quick post-production tips. One is retouch everything. We already talked about details and details can be fixed in post. So if you see a grain of dust in your image, you see something laying on top of the product that you're like, is that a piece of food? What is that? Go in there, retouch it, take the extra time. I know it's annoying. I personally can't stand doing it. It drives me insane getting there with that little selection tool over and over, but it makes a huge difference in how the final product looks. And if you're doing this as a job for somebody, you obviously wanna make the best impression possible. And another thing is watching colors in post. Now I know a lot of people love to edit their colors, I love to edit them as well. But the thing is, if you are capturing a product that is color specific, you wanna make sure that you're staying in line with how the product actually looks for a number of reasons. One, you don't wanna sell someone on something that's not what they actually want. You know, Say like a pair of shoes is orange and it comes out more yellow looking in your photo, they might want a yellow pair of shoes and not the orange ones they're gonna get. So keep color adjustments maybe to a minimum. And if you're gonna change anything around, I would recommend changing color adjustments adjustments to go more towards what it looks like in real life, as opposed to adjusting it to what you want to see. You see, product photography is not necessarily about what you want to see. It's about presenting reality in the best way possible. Now, the last note I have here is understanding how the product is used. So capturing the product that you're making a photo of in a way that makes sense to the viewer. If you had a pair of shoes that are running shoes, are you going to show them, I don't know, next to a pool? No. You're gonna show them on a track or in a gym or something like that. Those are very basic examples, but think in those terms. What is this product for and how do I present it in a way that makes sense to someone who's interested in it? Y'all know marketing is everything. One super interesting phenomenon that's happened in the last couple years is the increase in drop shipping stores on Facebook. Essentially, there's a Facebook page that runs an ad that says, hey, check out how cool this necklace is. Someone buys that necklace and it only costs 50 cents a dollar to make, but they're buying it for 20, 30, sometimes maybe $50 because they believe there is brand continuity behind it. And people are achieving this through the product photography and the story they're telling with these particular products. A 25 cent necklace is a 25 cent necklace until it's presented like a $100 necklace. So keep that in mind. Those are the keys to product photography, the quick version of it. See y'all next time.